The Wisconsin Badgers and Minnesota Golden Gophers face off once again in the WCHA final face off. It is part five of the border battle series just this season. So Wisconsin is seeking a record eighth national title. Can they do it? It all starts this weekend. Eh, I know we've said it starts this weekend a couple of times in a row, but now the final face off in Minneapolis. Can the Badgers knock off their two biggest rivals on back-to-back days? Maybe capture the number one overall seed in the NCAA tournament? I don't know, but we're going to break it all down here on the Scotty Six Pack. Good morning, and thank you for enjoying it with a Six Pack. The Scotty Six Pack, the only podcast talking all things Wisconsin sports with you six days a week. I'm your host, Kedrick Stumbers. You can find me on the website, formerly known as Twitter, at Kedrick Stumbers, and follow the podcast at Scotty Six Pack for the latest updates in Wisconsin sports. Got an awesome show. We're going to be talking to 1070 The Game's Noah Clark. Of course, breaking down all things Wisconsin women's hockey after they sweep the St. Thomas Tommies and what's coming up this weekend. So we welcome into the show the one and only Noah Clark. Thank you, as always, for joining us. How's it going, Noah? Oh, it's going good. Bit tired. Bit, bit, it's been a been a long week, but it's uh yeah, I'm just ready. Final face off. Final face off. Wisconsin, Minnesota. In Minnesota again. I'm ready to see the Badgers break the hearts of the Gophers once again for what is it? The fifth time you said uh, this season. So yeah, let's get to it. Yeah. It should be a, a great final face off as always Minnesota. Of course, the conference tournament defending champs. Um, I, I mean, like last year, right? Ohio state wins the conference season regular title. Minnesota wins the conference tournament title. Wisconsin wins the national title. Can't ask for, for anything better in a conference. Again, the chance to see Wisconsin play both of those teams once again. Um, and it all got started last weekend as Wisconsin knocked off the St. Thomas Tommies in a sweep. Pretty solid win, if maybe a little bit more eventful in game one than it had to be. Uh what, what did you think about Wisconsin taking away those those pair of victories o- over the Tommies to advance to this weekend in Minneapolis? Well, first, well, I think the big thing was, thank goodness we weren't Minnesota the week before because <laughs> Minnesota kind of had to play on Sunday. Wisconsin at least was able to take care of business. And uh, Saturday, they really did a great job. Friday, there was a lot to uh, improve on. You know, it could be they just had, you know, first postseason jitters it could have been you know they weren't ready to go you know right out of the gate but they took care of St. Thomas and really a dominating performance Saturday I mean everybody got in Mm -hmm. on the scoring action like Anna Wilgren got her like second goal the season and Katie Kotlowski also scored as well Vivian Jungles scored as well so this was a great like Saturday was a great you know, all around performance from both, you know, from this team and Friday, not as, you know, team oriented, but still, you know, a win is a win. Yeah. You have to wonder if the Badgers were kind of still riding that high, maybe of beating Ohio state the Saturday prior when, when they came in to play St. Thomas the following Friday. Uh, I mean, I, I listened to, uh, on, on the Badger Extra Pot, oh, sorry, I cannot talk. On the Badger Extra podcast, uh, with Todd Molesky this past week, he he was talking with Casey O'Brien. And they said that that team was just like wired for a full day after beating Ohio State, um, the weekend beforehand. You kind of wonder if some of that starts to creep in, um, into the week into into prep as Scotland struggled to put Minnesota State away until late. I mean, had a two goal lead. Then Minnesota State goes on the power play. You and I kind of talked about it in the moment. I kind of thought Minnesota State might pull the goalie there. Obviously, pulling goalie while well, you have the power play, the other team can ice the puck without consequence. It's a little bit desperate, but I think you got to be a little bit desperate there if you're St. Thomas to to beat the Badgers. But the second game, quite a, quite a bit better. Wisconsin coming out with a ton of intensity. One of those games where you you ask yourself in in the midst of it, is Wisconsin going to have more goals than the other team has shots on goal in this one? Kind of kind of a classic. Mark Johnson coaching performance of, of getting his team ready to go. However, he might need to do it and, and really suffocating a, a lesser opponent in, in the bottom of the conference. Yeah. And 
it, it, St. Thomas, I mean, this is what their fourth year in the conference, I believe. We, we talked about this last week. This was their fourth yeah. year in the conference. So they're still trying to, you know, make a name for themselves. And they're realizing, you know, playing against Wisconsin's not an easy task for you to try and make your name known. So, uh, but yeah, after that, Ohio, I do. That's the thing that I didn't even think about was after the Ohio State game. You know, how wired was this team and how much energy this team had and, and potentially kind of a letdown. Thank God they didn't, mm-hmm. you know, lose that game to St. Thomas. Otherwise, you know, some people would have been pretty, pretty mad. But, you know, they got they got the job done. And hopefully I think Mark Johnson's going to let his team know now moving forward. We cannot have this same instance happen again at mm-hmm. all. It's 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 single elimination. You know, winner takes all. Let's go. Yeah, um, I don't know what's going to happen this this weekend, but if Wisconsin comes out and plays like they did against St. Thomas uh, on Friday, Wisconsin's going going home ba- back to Madison, taking that bus ride from from Ritter Arena back to Lebon early on Friday, not on Saturday like they would like to. Uh, so, so before we lose lose the thread on the weekend and, and move forward to what's coming next. Uh, give me a most valuable player and needs improvement player coming out of the series against St. Thomas. Uh, who, who are your MVP and NIP of this two game series? MVP has got to be Britta curl. Got to be Britta curl. Oh my goodness. Was she on fire? Like on I, I was looking right now. Yeah. Like I was looking at the stats today before we hopped on and just looking at her numbers. She is she is very close. She's now two points away from 60 points, which Wisconsin, that would be the third player this season. She'd be the third player this season. If she scores, uh, if she gets on that scoring category, she'd be the third player this season to get 60 points. Casey O'Brien got 60 mm-hmm. uh, at 62 and Kirsten Sims got 67. So, but, but Britta curl. Yeah, she was on, she was on one. I don't know if it's just when she woke up and she was just like, you know, this is my day. and. You know, she decided, hey, I'm going to go get a hat trick. She scored three goals in Saturday's game. She scored a goal in Friday night's game. Got to give credit to the captain of this team. Uh, I can't wait to see what she does next in Minnesota. Yeah, um, I, I think she's great. She She's on an absolute tear right now. It, it, it is. She, she and Casey O'Brien are almost untouchable right now. You add that with the fact that Kirsten Sims is still doing Kirsten Sims things. This team's dangerous. This, this team, although the Friday night game was not the best, seems to be heating up at the right time. Um, I think if I'm going MVP, I probably got to go the same route there. I, I like, I, I don't know how you go with anybody, but Casey, Casey O'Brien, uh, you, you think about one of the, one of the goals on like just a textbook two two on one for her. Like she, she's just playing great. I think the batters, maybe the downside is, you know, having a little bit of trouble staying, staying out of the box right now, but they're not any worse than anybody else in the, in the country. Not particularly, not any of the teams that they're going to be competing with for a national title here. So I don't, I don't really have a problem with it, but Brittle curl and, uh, absolutely dominant lately. When you're looking at players coming out of this who need need improvement, who who do you think you need more from uh, out of this past weekend? Oh, I got to go with Jane Gervais this this past mm. weekend. Friday, Friday, it was. I was hoping that you know Jane Gervais would take the reins and really just give the Badgers that defensive you know you know defensive brick wall that they needed. And that was not the case. And they struggled. She struggled mightily against the Tommies. It it wasn't a good performance from her. And then the fact that Ava McNaughton had an even better performance, only giving up one goal, I think definitely says a lot uh, moving forward with, with the way that the final faceoff could go in terms of goaltending, you know, Ava McNaughton has won her last two games. Uh, won the last two big games, her first playoff game against St. Thomas and then the game against Ohio State, and she played spectacularly in both of them. And Jane really, I think, just came out and came out flat. Now, I will say Wisconsin did have a couple defensive breakdowns where they they did kind of let Jane Gervais have to play the one-on-one type scenario. But even still, like, you've got to make some of those saves. And – even when like your defense is not playing well, you've got to be that person that says, you know, 
nothing gets past me. I it stops here. And that wasn't the case. And hopefully she gets her shot in Minnesota. But yeah, tough one for Jane Gervais. Yeah, I think it's hard to suss out exactly what I mean. I'm I'm not a goaltender coach, right? I never played goalie growing up. So it, it, to me, it's a little bit hard to suss out th- those two Lauren Stensley goals for the for the Tommies on, on Friday night, right? Exactly who's whose fault that is. Better on the second goal had a little bit of a defensive breakdown there. She she gets open in, in the slot, rip, rips a great shot, gets it gets it past Jane Gervais. The first goal in particular, and I think this is where my NIP for the weekend comes comes out of, um, is Caroline Harvey. And that is to say, Caroline Harvey had, had a solid weekend. She she recorded mm-hmm. a couple of assists, didn't score, but like scoring is just not what she, what she's doing a ton this year in terms of goal production. And I'm fine with that. Um, but I think on this team that that we have talked about in the past when we talked about uh, in this first uh, little little series here, as we're going through the tail end of the season, one of the first things that you talked about when talking about the weaknesses of this team is the inexperience on defense. They, they don't really have any seniors or juniors who make up the top lines of the defense. It's a lot of really young players. Caroline Harvey needs to play more like an older player. She has that Olympic experience. She has top end experience. You're, one of your criticisms, one of your points you brought up back before the first Minnesota series a couple of weeks ago was these defenders tend to drift toward the puck. Caroline Harvey gave up that goal to Lauren Stensley by drifting toward the puck, attacking a little bit too aggressively in Wisconsin's offensive end, going all the way down to the opposing goal line to try to pick up a, a loose puck, challenge Lauren Stensley for it. She gets beat. And then the defender behind Caroline Harvey doesn't have the same kind of speed that a Caroline Harvey would, right? Gets beat. That leads to a breakaway goal f- for Lauren Stensley. Like, like I said last week, when you were talking about maybe Caroline Harvey is the player who needs improvement. Part of it's because we hold her to such a high standard. And I think that's, I think that's fair considering all that she's done for the program. For the fact that, she might be the best player in the country. I'm, I'm not totally sure. I think if she's not now, she definitely will be by the time she leaves college hockey. Yeah. Um, I just want a little bit more from her defensively than, than she showed uh, on Friday night. A- and if only because she's, she's kind of the, she's the top skater there. She's the top skater on that u- unit. And I know that's tough for her as a sophomore, but she's, an older sophomore, right? She took, she took that gap year to, to do the Olympic camp. Uh, so, so I think you got to expect a little bit more from, from Caroline Harvey. Yeah. And I mean, it also, she's had a kind of a down year too, in terms of scoring, but it's also, too, that's she, injuries. but, but that, yeah, exactly. Like the other thing is too, is she's been hurt. You know, she was hurt the, at the, like early on in the season and didn't really come back till late before they had that long buy. Um, I do think that that is true. And, and you look at this badge team, I pointed out again, they, they're very young. They have 13 combined freshmen and sophomores this year. Last mm-hmm. year, they were a lot more experienced because they had Nicole Amatia. They had, you know, Shayla Edwards. You had some of these people who were on the defensive side that were very good. You even had a switch at goaltender. You had Cami Cronish, who was in net. Now Cami Cronish is not there. Now they have Jane Gervais or Ava McNaughton. They're splitting time. It's a lot different of a defense this year. And mm-hmm. it's going to take, and it's been kind of a growing year for this team on the defensive side. They haven't, you know, they've had games, yes, where they shut down teams, but they've also had a lot of games this year where it's just simple, you know, breakdowns that you should be able to, you know, develop to where you're not making that mistake. And that was, you know, the case this weekend. And Caroline Harvey, you know, she, you're right. She's an old sophomore and she needs to step up for this team. She's the best skater on this team. And, when things aren't going well, you know, usually they turn to her to try and develop some scoring or some sort of spark. And that wasn't the case on Saturday or Friday for this team. I also think too, you look at it, they they didn't really have too many defensive help because Ava Murphy was hurt, you know. Yeah. And and thankfully, Kedrick, she is alive. She is alive <laughs> and well after that hit. But but still, like not having Ava Murphy does hurt because she has been playing really solid all year long. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, one one of the things that sets Wisconsin apart from some of these other national title contenders right now is that Wisconsin has the scoring to match with the rest of them, 
but the defense has, has been the question all year that Wisconsin hasn't exactly been able to match with some of these other national title contenders. Let's talk about some of these other potential national title contenders right here in the conference. Wisconsin to face Minnesota in the WCHA final faceoff semis, uh, that, that game on Friday, and then to face the winner of Ohio State or Duluth on Saturday for, for the conference tournament title, the auto bid to the NCAA tournament. We'll, of course, talk about that NCAA tournament bracket, where the Badgers are going to fa fall into it a little bit later on in the show. But what are you expecting to come out fr from this weekend? Um, Badgers, Minnesota, Friday night. Badgers have a little bit of a leg up, as you alluded to earlier in the show, because they only had to play two games this weekend. Minnesota dropped the first of the best of three series to Mankato on Friday night. Uh, you and I had a little bit of a good laugh about that, but, um, <laughs> Gophers came out, Brett, Brad Frost clearly gave it to him a little bit and, uh, kind of shellacked Mankato the rest of the way. What are you expecting out of this series? Uh, or not this series rather, but this, this game, in the final face off semifinals on Friday, it really is going to depend on, you know, for Wisconsin, can they, can they be able to handle the Gophers, you know, and can they be able to shut down Abby Murphy again? I mean, cause yeah. Cause, cause we've, we've had this conversation so much over the last few weeks. And even just during the year, like Abby Murphy is the only kind of player on this team that poses a threat to the Badgers. They have done phenomenally well in the last three meetings that they played her. And now you're playing her for a fourth time or now you're playing her for a fifth time. And it's, it's even more of a tougher task because now the stakes are a lot higher so yep. how can you contain number 18 in this scenario? And then obviously going back to it as well, special teams is going to be key again. I mean, this is a team that, you know, really Wisconsin right now really is, is, is surging on the offensive side. The power play unit has been surging really well too. They've got to really come into this game against Minnesota and they've got to come out and really just, put their foot on the gas because it's, you know, it's single elimination and talking with coach Dan cook earlier in the week, it was, you know, talking with him or actually, excuse me, not early in the week, but last week was it single elimination. You know, anything can happen. We just need to be ready for that next test. Yeah, I think it should be uh, a test of Wisconsin's defense more than anything. I, of course, I think Wisconsin's going to be able to score enough to keep up with the Gophers, but, Will, will Wisconsin be able to defend at a high enough level to, I mean, let, let that scoring count enough. Um, Abby Murphy, as we talked about on this show plenty of times, she's an absolute weapon for the Gophers. I, I was looking last night and I, I was, <laughs> I was up until 3am last night going down a, Oh my goodness. Division one collegiate women's hockey rabbit hole. Um, absolutely. Listen, I, I am a weirdo. I, I do this shit. Sometimes. Sicko. That's um, a sicko right yes. there. Abby Murphy leads the country with 13 power play goals on the season. Uh, she also has seven game winning goals, uh, which ranks fourth in the country. She is clutch and comes up with huge goals when, when you need it. Wisconsin doesn't go to the box a ton. Uh, but I think one of the big things, one of the things we criticized Caroline Harvey for last weekend, uh, last week when we talked was going to the box a little bit too much against Ohio state or risking too much Ryan Reeves. The box. Yes. Um, <laughs> didn't get that from Caroline Harvey this, this weekend, fortunately. Um, and definitely don't want that kind of stuff from, from her this upcoming weekend, because Abby Murphy on the power play is not something that I want to mess with. Um, Britta curl would like her to stay out of the box just a little bit more. Um, Ohio state. What, what are we expecting from the, from the Buckeyes? Ohio state, was a little, little pissed off after dropping a game to, to the Badgers. Blitzed the Buckeyes by a combined score of eight, or sorry, convinced, oh, I cannot talk. I was up until 3 a.m. Blitzed the Beavers by a combined score of 18 to one. They get, they going to bring that energy this weekend. I imagine you're, you're going to pick Ohio State in that other semifinal. What, what does Wisconsin need to, need to bring if the Badgers are able to dispose of the Gophers in, in round one this weekend? Well, the big thing is if they play Minnesota Duluth, it's going to be more of a physical game. Minnesota Duluth, one of the mm. more physical teams in the WCHA, they love to hit and they love to be very physical. 
They're one of the top teams every year defensively. They've got really solid goaltending. This is a Bulldogs team that's had this for a while where they're not a very good offensive team, but they shut down teams defensively and they like to be physical. So I'm going to throw this out here, Kendrick. Don't be surprised if Minnesota Duluth upsets Ohio State just because Mm -hmm. of their physicality and Ohio State with the speed. And Ohio State with the speed, you know, could get slowed down a bit. But now on the other side for Ohio State, if Ohio State with their speed really takes over this game, I think it could, you know, we could see the Buckeyes in the in this uh championship game. But for Wisconsin, it's they've just gotta not they just gotta not be in a situation where they're playing to the teams to their to their opponent's strengths. The big thing against Ohio State was they were playing, you know, against Ohio State, they were playing to their strengths, which is why they lost. I mean, in, in the first game, they 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 really kind of let Ohio State just control the game and really play it at their tempo, which their tempo is fast and it's yeah. it's up and down. They they play fast. They don't let you get a second, you know, to try and control the puck and be able to set up your passes and be able to generate some scoring chances. Ohio State likes to go quick, 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 like a basketball team. They're fast break out of the out of it. I know I'm making a basketball reference, but no, it know, makes sense. For 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 yeah, for this kind of term, it makes sense. Minnesota Duluth, the complete opposite. They are more of a slow but more physical team. So if you're Wisconsin, you don't want to play into their strengths where if they get a goal, it becomes a it becomes just a, a you know a muscle, a muscle battle, you know, I I don't know how to say that, like a fist fight where Mm -hmm. you're trying to out muscle Minnesota Duluth and try and get that first goal simply by just being physical, trying to, you know, out physical your opponent. That's the key for Wisconsin. You can't let those teams get into their, you know, into their strengths because the one loss that Wisconsin took against Minnesota Duluth, they played fully right into their strengths and the Bulldogs were able to seize the moment and pull off a incredible loss at LeBan. So same thing. And the same thing with Ohio state too. You can't let these mm-hmm. teams get, you can't let these teams get going into their strengths because otherwise it's just going to kill you. And if Wisconsin can play by their strengths, which they have done very well down the stretch of the season, there's a pretty good chance they could go on and, and win the WCHA. Yeah, for for what it's worth, Minnesota Duluth is 0 and 4 against the Buckeyes this this season. Not that that means they they can't take the fifth game, um, but Wisconsin, like you mentioned, dropped one of the four games to Duluth, but all of the three wins that Wisconsin had over the Bulldogs, each only by one goal. So definitely a game Wisconsin could lose in the WCHA final faceoff if it comes to it. If it is not Badgers Buckeyes in the final, uh, but the elephant in the room here. Who's going to be the starting goaltender? Mm. Let's let's hash it out. Let's let's take some time. Mm-hmm. Let's have the conversation. This this is the big question. Uh, who's it going to be? Jane Gervais, Ava McNaughton. Oh boy, I got to take a deep breath when I say this. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be Ava McNaughton. It's going to be Ava McNaughton. I I just I just I think the way that she's played against some of these teams this year. Like against some of these ranked teams, she's played better than Jane Gervais. Like you look at game one of the game one of the St. Cloud State game and game one of the Minnesota game. Jane Gervais had to force overtime. They, you know, both those te- you know, both those games went into overtime. And Wisconsin, thank God, won both of those games. The Ohio State game, she didn't play her best. They lost. It happens. But in game two with Ava McNaughton, it just seems like that the offense has more of a flow and the defense. I think when Ava's out there, there's a little bit more of communication and a little bit more sense of what's the word. Like they're all to, like all of them are playing together. Like the freshmen and sophomores, all those younger guys are all playing together on the ice at the same time. Mm-hmm. And Ava on top of that too, has made some has had some incredible games this year where she has just stood on her head when the defense has not played well and been able to shut down teams. And I said this too, you know, which I said this earlier in, in the show. I, I said, you know, you need a goalie to be your defense when your defense is playing really not that good. And Ava yeah. McNaughton has done that this this season. 
You yeah. look at it too in the two in the last two matchups against the Gophers, she's played phenomenally well. And and I and I gotta give her credit. A lot of times when freshman goalies play against like a team like the Minnesota Golden Gophers, I feel like I would wet my pants. I'm just gonna throw that out there. <laughs> but the way that she's played, I gotta give her credit. She stands on her head, and I expect her to start Friday night against Minnesota in Ritter Arena. I think it's gonna happen. We're gonna see a freshman. So let me let me give you a little bit of a hypothetical here. Ooh, hypothetical. What if Mark Johnson doesn't make the decision this weekend? This is the Ooh. last time this team will have to play on back-to-back days this season. Once you right. get to the tournament, you, you get a day of rest, at least between the two games. I think there's a chance Mark Johnson doesn't make the decision this weekend. And maybe who he plays in the semifinals tips his hand just a little bit considering who he might be saving for the Buckeyes in the final. But I think there's a chance that Mark Johnson plays them both this weekend. Still, frankly, I I think it, it is maybe informed by the fact that I gunned to my head and putting my life on the line, totally thinking that Ohio state's going to play both their goaltenders this weekend. Mm-hmm. They they have the best one two punch in the country in Amanda Teeley and, and Reagan Kirk. I think Reagan Kirk will play game two, but I wonder if that is also affecting the thinking of Mark Johnson. Thinking if Ohio State's going to have a totally fresh goalie in, in the finals, may, may as well have a totally fresh goalie for ourselves. What do you think? Am I absolutely deluded here, or does my line of line of reasoning make a little bit of sense? You're not far off. I mean that 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 is possible. I mean like, but then it comes down to that decision of. Does Mark Johnson switch the way that he wants to go with goalies? Because it, yeah. it's a single elimination game. Like if you don't win, like you're you're done. So it, I, it the question could could you know could rise. You know, do they start Ava in this game and then maybe give Jane the Ohio State game, or do they keep it the way that it was going? I do think you're right because you look at the goaltending for the Ohio State Minnesota Luth game. It wouldn't surprise me if. Ohio State or Minnesota Duluth, if one of those two teams wins, that they switch goalies for that next yeah, day. Yeah, they both they they both because they both have incredible team. goaltending. Yeah. So that that is a possibility for the it's Bulldogs, including a, a for the Bulldogs, including a, a potential rook, rookie of the year in, in in net behind it too. Right, like, uh-huh. it's a great, so. great, great, great goalie combo. Um, I think the only thing about it being single elimination, though, I think the Badgers are locked into the two spot. Uh, in the NCAA tournament, mm-hmm. in the bracket. So I wonder if that's maybe affecting how he's thinking. I, I know this team, this program plays to win every single game. Um, so I am sure they are really only looking at the single game in front of them and playing single elimination hockey like it is the only thing that matters right now. But I wonder if that thought in the back of his head is creeping in that, hey, we're probably the two seed in the bracket anyway no matter which way things go against Minnesota on Friday. So if we drop this game, it's not the end of the world. Um, and maybe they, they don't care about playing, playing that second game on Friday or on Saturday or not. Um, now if they were to win it or if they were to win on Friday, they would definitely want to win on Saturday, but I think it's a different conversation. Um, in terms of who the goaltender should be. I think you're right. I think it has to be Ava McNaughton. I, figured that you were going to come in here with an Ava McNaughton case. And so I tried to build a case for Jane Gervais as the opposite side of the coin last night, because I think she's played well this season in conference Mm play. Ava and Jane's save percentage is incredibly similar. Um, But if you look at the past month, Ava McNaughton has just played a ton better. If you look at the games against Ohio state, Minnesota state, St. Cloud and Duluth in, in those in the latter series against those four opponents. So like just taking into account like January until now against the best competition. Um, Ava McNaughton, this is the one place where I think there is case. Ava McNaughton does have a lower save percentage against those four teams the second time around than Jane. And, it, and it's pretty stark at 926 versus 935. I think where you can make the case for Ava on the flip side is that if you take out that disastrous game against Minnesota Duluth, where she allowed four goals on 31 shots, both. You take out if you take game, away both, both of them too. Yeah. If you take that out, she's posting a 948 save percentage against the top competition that she's fa- 
faced as of late. I think it's, you know, you could say it's a little bit unfair to take out one game. It's still part of the performance, but on the other, on the other hand, Jane Gervais also has a, a pretty bad game again, St. Thomas, two goals on 11 shots. Again, we pointed out earlier in the show, maybe those goals aren't necessarily on her, but breakaway goal, you, you against a, a St. Thomas, Tommy, you're probably going to have to make a couple of breakaway saves in the NCAA tournament. If you're going to win a national title here, Jane Gervais is five, eight Anna McNaughton, six foot. There's maybe just some upside there that you want to tap into. I think it's really hard. Plus like the initial loss against Ohio state this season, then wasn't really Ava McNaughton's fault. Jane Gervais and her career is 0-3 against Ohio State, but I think the game that she played last year against Ohio State probably wasn't her fault as Wisconsin lost that game 5-0 and allowed 39 shots on goal. Good Lord. Yeah, that team last year was, if people forget, that team last year wasn't good until it won the national title. <laughs> like, All right, question about this goalie conversation, because I think this goalie conversation is fascinating because yes. I think it really is close. Although I'm saying I think it's hard to make the case for Jane Gervais. I think it is close because this team has been the second best team in the country basically all season playing both goalies. The last time Mark Johnson ran through the end of the season with a red shirt junior in goalie or younger. Jane Gervais is a red shirt junior. This program's known for running with his veteran goaltenders. Who is the last goalie Mark Johnson ran through the end of the season with as a red shirt oh. junior or younger and when? Oh, I should. I know this. It's on the tip of my tongue. Cause I was talking about this the uh, I was talking about this a couple weeks ago with Reed because they were he mentioned that on the broadcast. Oh, I'm stumped. I'm stumped. Throw, throw out throw out a goalie name. You got a you got a goalie name here. Is it? I'm gonna throw Kristen Campbell out there. Yes, it is Kristen Campbell. Is it, okay. Yes, that's what I, I mean, thought. In 2019, so five seasons ago, when the Badgers won the Natty, she also played the entire year prior after transferring to Wisconsin following the shuttering of North Dakota's program. She was the only goalie that played a, a single second for Wisconsin that season uh, a, as a redshirt sophomore for a true freshman, which of course is Ava McNaughton. I don't know how far back you have to go. Uh, you might have to go all the way far back to Jesse Vetter in 2006 to find the last time Wisconsin ran through the season with a true freshman goaltender. Of course, Jesse Vetter then ended up winning the national title that year and was most most outstanding player of the Frozen Four. I'm not saying Ava McNaughton is going to be that, um, but it's it's tough. Um, but also, if you're making like. A, a, a appeal to emotion here about Jesse Vetter. And hey, the last time Wisconsin played a, a freshman goaltender all the way, they won the national title. You got to also take into the fact, oh, I said Jane Gervais is 5'8". Guess who else is 5'8", 5'9". Yeah, it's it's Jesse Vetter. So a, a short goalie can do it with this program. I think this is an incredibly hard question to answer. Do you have any final thoughts on, on the goalie conversation after I pontificated there for a few minutes? I mean, the only thing that really you could say about the goalie comp, the goalie comp is Jane Gervais she's a junior she has the experience which if you're Mar like if you're i mean i understand it's a she classic hasn't played, thing. though she hasn't, she hasn't played, um, though she doesn't really have the experience right but if like if i'm if you're a coach like that's a classic coach thing right there yeah. it's like it's like you know ava's a freshman do i really trust a freshman mm, maybe i'll go with the junior for experience just because if we really you know just because it's a playoff game and she may have playoff experience, which she doesn't really, but it's like, no, you want to go mean, with the experience. Like it's not that Mark Johnson's averse to playing up the talent at, at expense of experience though. Right. We talked about Kristen Campbell and although she was a red shirt sophomore, right. Th three years in, in, a, in a program, totally different than a true freshman, but a red shirt sophomore, he, he played her a, every single second of the season when she first came into the program and Renee Debian played, played for four consecutive years. Jesse Vetter played for four consecutive years. It is not like Mark Johnson doesn't have experience. Do I think Ava McNaughton is Jesse Vetter or Anne Renee Debian? Probably too soon to tell. Also probably not um, because almost nobody is either of those two, but yeah, I, I don't know. It, it's an incredibly hard 
question to answer. Uh, I don't envy Mark Johnson for, for having to be the one to do it. Um, when we're not talking about the goalies, uh, other other players on the ice, what are some key injuries to watch for the Badgers this weekend? We talked a little bit about Ava Murphy, who left the game on Friday against St. Thomas. She's still alive. Getting hard hit. She's still alive, uh, although she did not play on Saturday. Uh, any other injury notes and question marks to watch for the Badgers this weekend? Oh, I mean, besides Ava Murphy, I hope and I think she's probably going to be back for this weekend okay. series. I think she I think it was just a concussion and it's mm. St. Thomas. You don't really have to put her out there to risk her getting hurt even more against St. Thomas. Plus it's St. Thomas. So uh, there's that Sophie Elgison out for the season. She tore ACL. That's a that. I, that and I, and I think people don't realize how important Sophie Elgison is. She's a very key part of that, like third or fourth line for that team. And when it gets to postseason time, like we've seen this in the NHL, mm-hmm. three third and your third and fourth lines are pretty key because it keeps your first and second lines very rested for when you need them to go out and make you and get you a score. And Sophie is kind of like the captain of that third or fourth line, mm. which that doesn't sound like a back in a compliment, but I'm just saying like <laughs> she, she, she has that leadership to, you know, for those younger, for those younger skaters in, you know, that aren't as good to, you know, ge- to generate some sort of offense in those deeper lines. So with her being gone, that's like, that's, a little bit of a loss because now they don't have that depth at the forward position. And the other thing with Sophie is they've moved her around so much this year with her being out. Mm. Now it makes it a lot harder for, for Mark Johnson to kind of move pieces around a bit because he would always come to games and be like, Sophie, you're going to play, you know, you know, you're going to play on the left side. You're going to play on the right side. Now you're going to play, you know, left defense, or now you're going to play right. He doesn't, he doesn't have that now. And that's a big loss for, for Wisconsin. Yeah. Uh, I think that is certainly tough for, for, for the Badgers, but shouldn't be enough of an excuse if they, you know, lose on, on Friday, for example. Um, all right. We, we are cutting it close here on, on time. <laughs> we are running a little <laughs> bit long. Um, but let's, let's talk bracketology for just a second here. Um, the Badgers seeking the automatic bid to the NCAA tournament, but I think likely a a tournament team already. Um, I'm going to bring up here. I have every team still in tournament contention, um, on my other, yeah, let me, let me share my screen here. Oh man. Women's hockey bracketology done. Wait to edit this out later. All right. Okay. Every team here for, for the viewers on YouTube, every team in green is still in conference tournament contention. Uh, every team in gold has clinched the automatic bid uh, to the NCAA tournament by winning their conference tournament. And then Quinnipiac is in red. I think they're out of contention, but kept them there because they're on like that cut line. I think they might be the first team left out of the tournament. Uh, rank on the far left hand side there is how the team ranks in the pairwise rankings right now which is what the uh selection committee effectively uses uh to choose the teams that go to the ncaa tournament so ohio state is pretty far ahead in the rankings right now I, i think ohio state has already clinched number one wisconsin has clinched number two clarkson colgate are going to be three, four in some order. I think Clarkson probably sticks at three and then Colgate at four. Um, I think mostly these auto bids, e- each of those teams have kind of linked their, their spot in, in the bracket. When I'm looking at the pairwise rankings, maybe Clarkson and Colgate could, could swap spots between three and four. Maybe Cornell St. Lawrence could swap spots between three, three and four. Um, but there are five conferences in Division one college hockey, WCHA, the ECAC, uh, Hockey East, the CHA, and the NUHA. Um, five of those teams that win the automatic bid by winning their conference tournament, get into the NCAA tournament, and then top six ranked teams uh, by the pairwise rankings get in as automatic bids, or sorry, get in as at large bids. So 11 teams total. Noah, thoughts here as you're looking at the pairwise rankings. 
who might be getting into the to the NCAA tournament here? What what about teams that uh, Wisconsin, Wisconsin might be facing? Any any immediate takeaways when when looking here at uh, the the slate of teams in contention? So just to just to double check because I I haven't for for tournament. So if it's a two seed, they'd have to play a seven seed. Is it or no? Oh or no, because it's eleven uh, teams. They they play the winner of the seven ten. So that would be Connecticut and St. Lawrence for right now, at least. Um, I think Wisconsin, if if I'm looking at it, I, I would play St. Lawrence. And just mm-hmm. because St. Lawrence towards the end of the season has been kind of going on a roller coaster ride. They've been going up. They've had games this year where they've gone up and they just collapse. Like their last few games of the season, they had a force, you know, they had a, a game where they were up four three and Against, I can't remember who it was, but they were they were up four three. They were up four goals in that game, and they are up three goals in that game, and they let the game slip away, and they forced overtime, which luckily they were able to win. But still, like, it's not against a ranked team. You have to win that game, and mm-hmm. they 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 won that game. They got the point, but I also think too, like, St. Lawrence has not been you know the best of late down the stretch. I would think the Badgers, if Given the chance, I think they have a they have the advantage over St. Lawrence. I, I think UConn also is a good matchup for them if they were to play UConn and their Huskies. But St. Lawrence, to me, I just think they're they're not ready. They they are not mm. ready for you know what could be coming to them if they play like these top you know three teams, and especially the Badgers. The Badgers just this year have been just rolling, and they are so hot right now. And I think St. Lawrence has not played a team yet that has been this hot and this on a streak. And Wisconsin, I think could that could be a great opponent for them is playing St. Lawrence. Yeah. For let, let me pull up a an actual bracket here. My I, I, I had created a bracket last night and then my, my computer cra- my computer crashed and I had to recreate it just now. So I have a recreation of the tournament bracket which you should be able to see now ah yeah. here we go yeah so if seating holds as is for right now um oh god mm-hmm. uh wisconsin would host the winner of st lawrence penn state wisconsin hosting that first round regional matchup one of the things that i look at and take away from here is i think minnesota is pretty firmly locked into the five line man your your reward for a five line is having to travel out for the regional final against Colgate or Clarkson. <laughs> that is brutal. Good luck. Um, yeah, <laughs> tough, tough, tough matchup. Uh, I mean, like, I, I we we talked about it maybe on the show um, a week or so ago. I think there are really only four national title contenders this year. I think it's Ohio State, Wisconsin, Colgate, and Clarkson. Um, Colgate beat Ohio state. It split a series in the first series of the year for the Buckeyes. Clarkson has not lost to Colgate yet this season. I think all those teams are good. ECAC and WCHA are probably going to get the same number of teams into the tournament once again, this year Mm -hmm. should be, should be really fascinating. Um, Any other thoughts looking at the actual bracket here, um, projecting ahead to selection Sunday. I think it, Clarkson and if Minnesota plays Clarkson, they are very much screwed. Like they, 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 like if they have to, if they, if they have to play Clarkson, they are in a very tough, very tough spot because Clarkson, one of the top defenses in all of college hockey this year, they, they are one of the top teams this year in defensive hockey. And I think if Minnesota were to get in that situation against them, they would not score a goal. I am just throwing that out there. They will not score a goal. Um, Ohio State, if they have to play Duluth again, I. I don't know if Ohio state wins against Duluth and Mm. cause, cause I mean, you, if imagine you're already having to play Minnesota Duluth in the WCHA final face off this weekend. And then imagine having to play them in a NCAA tournament game. Like at this point, Minnesota Duluth, I think has to win one of these games. Cause like this would be, that'd be what the sixth time that they play the Buckeyes, I believe. Is it it six? Yeah. six. Six. It'd be the sixth time. Like at some point, you, Minnesota Luce is going to get one. And I think it would be in this tournament matchup. So don't be surprised if the Buckeyes get upset to Duluth, you know, at some point uh, here in these next two, in these potentially next two meetings that could happen. Uh, Wisconsin, 
uh, St. Lawrence or Penn State, I still think St. Lawrence would be there, would be a good opponent for Wisconsin. I think it would, I think St. Lawrence has been up and down. I mm. think they haven't been really consistent down the stretch of this year in terms of goals. And Wisconsin has been, I'm given, I, I like that matchup a lot. And Wisconsin's road to the Frozen Four is relatively easy. I mean, all they would have to do is play Colgate or Clarkson and, it I think is I think that's going to be really easy for them. I mean, let me phrase that. Knock on wood because I don't want to jinx it. But <laughs> I think it would be. I think they would. I think Clarkson is a good opponent. But I think if I'm looking at both sides, Wisconsin has the more talent than Clarkson does on the other side. Clarkson's just a really solid defensive team this year. Yeah, they are uh, h- hitting on that that Duluth and potential Hockey East champ matchup. Um, I, I think that Hockey East champ is is going to be either. Uh, Connecticut or Northeastern, the other two teams playing in the semis there are New Hampshire and Boston College. If you're listening to this now, uh, those games might, those semifinals might already be over. Those semifinals are being hosted uh, today, Wednesday at 3.30 p.m. Um, Also, Hockey East, want to give a shout out. Their media guide for their tournament is awesome. Top notch, absolutely phenomenal. Uh, So, so much information. Um, Like, (laughs) I delve into the book. Northeastern at one point won the hockey East tournament six years in a row. Uh, yeah, they're a dominant point. program. Yeah, at UConn, however, at won the regular season title this year by by ten points. They're backstopped by one of the best goalies in the country, Megan Warriner, who has a nine fifty one save save percentage. They could knock off Duluth. Um, I think of the other matchup that Wisconsin might potentially have to play in St. Louis and Penn State. Yeah, maybe St. Lawrence doesn't have top end scorers, but they certainly have players who can score. Uh, Tetsi, uh Tessie Janico only trails other Badgers in assists this season, only trails Casey O'Brien, Britta Curl, and, and Kirsten Sims, one of one of the top assist getters in the country over in St. Lawrence. And then Penn State has, you know, enough there. They already have the auto bid. They're, they're going to have time to get healthy. Uh, I, I think that might be a tough one for the Badgers. But the Badgers certainly going, going to host a, a first-round regional matchup next weekend. And it would be the first time that Wisconsin has hosted a regional since when, Noah? Because I, I think it, it might shock you how long Wisconsin has gone without hosting a regional. Was it because the last one was against Mercyhurst that they hosted, right? That was, oh, uh, was that 2018, I believe? No, not not that far back. 2021, Wisconsin has not hosted a regional in back-to-back oh. seasons. Uh, ah. which maybe maybe oh, a that. little bit surprising. Maybe a little bit surprising, but... Only because if you go back before 2021, when is the last time Wisconsin did not host a regional? Yeah, that's very long. <laughs> that's very long. I got <laughs> it. I'll, I'll, I'll let you think when talking about this tournament format, this 11 team tournament format is fairly new. This will be the fourth iteration. Uh, no, this will be the third iteration of the 11 team format. This format was only eight teams for quite a long time. Uh, The NUHA, the North Northeastern women's hockey association. They have an automatic birth to the NCAA tournament. Now, just for the second time uh, in that conference's history, this was an eight team tournament for quite a long time uh, for uh, all of its existence up, up until now. Uh, Wisconsin has not hosted a regional in the 12 team format. Um, but yeah, Noah, last time prior to 2021 that Wisconsin missed out on the opportunity to host a regional in the eight team format of the tournament. Ooh, man, you, you, there's a lot of trivia today. A lot of trivia questions today. It's been three questions. <laughs> it has been three questions. It, it's, oh man, I got to rack my brain around this. I'm all like, oh, is it in the 2010s? It has to be in the... T- it is in the 2010s. You have to go. You have to go back to the 2010s. Uh, I want to say it was other, when they they didn't they did host in 21, right? But didn't host in 2020, but would have yes uh, if COVID had not canceled the NCAA tournament. So you have to go back at least to 2019. When were the Winter Olympics? Because I know Mark Johnson coached the Winter Olympics. Was it 2016? Mm. I want to say 2016. You you have to go further back than 2016. Ah, uh, okay. 2012. 
Uh, you you are one year off. Ah, you have to go all the way back to nope. You have to go all the way back to 2013. Oh. One year off the other direction. The oh. last time Wisconsin, <laughs> the last time Wisconsin missed the NCAA tournament. So for as long as it like two years, we can say that hasn't been so long since Wisconsin yeah. hasn't hosted a regional. But this team hosts regionals every single year. Otherwise, had not missed out on hosting a regional since 2013. The last time the team had missed the NCAA tournament. So we'll be great to have postseason NCAA tournament hockey back in Madison once again. Noah, any final thoughts on, on the week to come? We, we have gone very long here talking yes. about <laughs> women's <laughs> college hockey. Oh, oh man. No, it's fun. I didn't even know. I, cause I couldn't remember the 2013 stat. I thought I, cause I remember that was the year I think that the winter Olympics were going on and Mark Johnson was coaching team USA and they had Jackie Crum coaching. It wouldn't be that because year. that's that's uh, an odd odd numbered year. Oh, is it? Well, then, because someone was telling me that the I'll have to look it up later. I'm like, God, I'm all like out of like, <laughs> I'm all out of sorts right now. This is not been a day for me, but uh, yeah, no, this is going to be fun. I think Wisconsin, if they handle Minnesota, they take care of their business. Uh, expect them. And if they win against Ohio State or Minnesota Duluth, I mean, that would be incredible. I think if they were to win their tournament, maybe they get the one seed. Who knows? But if they stay as a two seed, you know, hey, it's a little bit easier road, but you still have to play Clarkson or Colgate. Yeah, I don't think. So I dug into the pairwise comparisons and it doesn't seem like there's a way for Wisconsin to catch um, uh, Ohio state. Doesn't seem it. like there's a lot of move there. Of course the committee does yeah. have some discretion, um, but by and large, they, they try to stick true to those comparison points. Um, yeah. And those comparison points being the NPI, which is the NCAA's like power rankings index head to head uh, contests and, and uh, common and record against common opponents. Mm-hmm. So uh, I think Ohio state has that number one seed locked up. They have the best body of work in, in the sport by far, quite frankly. Um, Noah, thank you for joining us for a very long episode of the Scotty six pack podcast. I believe the longest in history. <laughs> would, <laughs> would you like to talk to the folks, tell them where to find more Noah Clark if they have not had enough of you today? <clears throat> oh man, if you guys haven't had enough for me, you can find me on Clark Rigo at the app formerly known as Twitter. Uh snap the pig skin. We got uh some great stuff coming up. Free agencies coming up for the NFL. So me and Sam are gonna talk that stuff. And then uh 1070 the game. 1070 the game. Oh, and then WSUM, the student section as well, too. I will uh, I Snake didn't go on the students. Yeah, Snake Sports Tuesdays. <laughs> I didn't actually go on this week. I needed a, I needed a day off just to just to relax. But um, yeah, Snake Sports Tuesdays from six to seven on WSCM, and then you can catch me on ten seventy the game uh, during Wisconsin women's hockey. And it's always a blast with PB and Greeny and those guys. They know their stuff, and as well as I do, and it's always a fun blast during those weekends. Should be. Thank you, Noah, for joining the Scotty Six Pack Podcast. Stay tuned to the feed because tomorrow, assuming I'm not on a freaking airplane, uh, we'll, we'll be talking about Wisconsin Rutgers hopefully getting a win on senior night uh, for, for Tyler Wall. We'll preview uh, the Badgers trip to West Lafayette for Zach Eady's senior night after that. <laughs> That's not going to go well. Hopefully the women's hockey season goes better on Wisconsin.